Welcome to the Global Prayer Network, with Rev. Dr. Seth O. Lardy. We pray this teaching will impact your life, and bring you closer in your walk with Jesus. Let's get ready to receive today's teaching from, Rev. Dr. Seth O. Lardy. We're talking about surviving the storms of negative relationship. Negative relationships can be very difficult, very problematic. It impacts relationship between children and parents. It impacts the relationship between spouses. It impacts the relationship between uh, employer and employee. It impacts the relationship between people of the same community. And oftentimes, as I think about it, we do not spend enough time on some of the things that really do matter. One of which I believe with all of my heart, the business of relationships. And that's why Jesus would quickly say that people will know that you are my disciples, not by what you say, what you think, and, and what you have built and constructed, they will know you're my disciples because of the love you have one for another. That's relational kind of interaction. And so I want to just employ and encourage you to uh, let's focus on this subject because this can be the make or break of what God wants to do in your life. Do you know that sometimes when God is about to do something amazing in your life, some straggler will come along and destabilize your entire morning, your entire life. I mean, just cause you to get off your rockers. And instead of focusing on the goodness of God, the beauty of God, the blessings of God, you have allowed this individual to cause you to become distracted. That's why Paul said, listen, I have learned something and that is to forget the things of the past and I'm pursuing the prize of the high calling. And to do that, I've got to be focused. I've got to be focused. I've got to be focused. Don't allow people to cause you to be distracted from your goals, your dreams, your ambition, your desires. People will do it. And how many of us know that we tend to remember the negative things much longer than the positive things. There is a song that says, when I think of the goodness of the Lord and all that he's done for me, when I think of the goodness of God, you almost got to think about it. Whereas the negative, you don't have to even think about it, it's always with you. As David said, my sins are always with me. That's why you have to work at remaining focused. It just wouldn't happen. Remaining focused is like driving. You cannot afford not to keep your eye on the road. You cannot afford to keep your hand on the steering. If you will avoid accident, you've got to remain focused. A lot of time when you see accidents, sometimes it's because I was looking somewhere else. Something else caught my attention. And that's life. And so I want to encourage you today, especially in the business of relationships. Negative, difficult individuals, if you're not careful, you will soon find yourself becoming just like them. You curse me out, I curse you out. Now, you know you don't curse. 
So why are you cursing? Well, she cursed me or he cursed me. And so I'm cursing him back. Uh, no. What did the word of God say? Uh, say, as much as lieth in you, as much as you are responsible, be at peace with all persons. As much as in you lie the capability and the responsibility, you be at peace. Because someone is angry, you getting angry does not help the situation. We think it does, but it does not. And so today we want to add to this list of dealing with difficult people. You know, we said you must learn to be calm. You must learn to listen and, and all of that. Those are all important attributes when dealing with difficult people. You got to love them. Today we want to add reflection, respect, and being dignified toward others. In other words, when you are dealing with difficult people, you've got to learn how to reflect. And reflection means to think carefully about the possibilities. In other words, when you are dealing with a difficult person, you cannot afford just to talk or speak because difficult people are exactly what they are, difficult and part of their mode of operandi is that they remember things. That's part of why they're difficult. Because they have all this stuff piled up. Instead of letting it go on a daily basis, releasing it and let it go. I mean, just imagine if God was keeping record of every day's thought, deed, actions, every day about us. And every day when we came to prayer, God started from the day you started crawling. Your parents told you don't touch this and you started to touch it. From the day you became a teenager, your parents said don't go this way. And at night you snuck out and went. When you became a young adult, you were told not to do this and that, and you did it anyhow. What if God was constantly reminding us? Many of us would not want to come to God in prayer. No, mm -mm. because we knew if and when we will come, God will remind us about our failures and our sinful action, walking around here pretending like you're this and that and the other, when you know deep down in your heart the kind of things you've done, and in some instances, the kind of things you're doing right now. But not so with God. Believe it or not, when we come to God and ask God to forgive us, the scripture says that we, he's just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. To cleanse means to clean. If any be in Christ, you are a new creature. Old things are passed away. Old things are passed away. Listen, if you woke up this morning, if God woke you up this morning, why don't you focus on today's blessings of being alive? Why don't you focus on today's gift of life? Why waste your time going back to yesterday and the day before? 
today. As the scripture says, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us what? Rejoice and be glad in it. You cannot rejoice in it if you're busy dragging the load, the pain, the anguish of yesterday. Rejoice, he says. And again, I say rejoice. But how can you rejoice if you're all distracted, disturbed about others and sometimes even about yourself? So when you're dealing with difficult people, you got to learn to reflect. Don't just start talking. Think before you talk. Then not only that, but you've got to respect them. You've got to respect them. Respect is to recognize the worth of a person. A person may be poor. A person may be homeless. A person may be even a lunatic. But they still possess the spirit of God in them. And so when we meet people, we've got to learn to respect them. Remember what Jesus said in Matthew chapter 25. He said on that day when the king will sit in his glory and all of the people standing before him, there will be those on the right and those on the left. And he will say to one group, depart away from me. I never knew you. I was hungry. Where were you? I was thirsty. Where were you? I was naked. Where were you? I was in prison. Where were you? And those who he would tell depart away from me, we said, Lord, when did we see you? Nobody told us. No one gave us the 411 that you were coming. Nah, when did we see you? And then those on the right, he would say to them, I was hungry. I was thirsty. I was a stranger. I was naked. I was in prison. Yes, and you took me in, you fed me, you gave me a drink, yes. And he said, Lord, when did we see you? When you did it to the least of these. You did it unto me. We have to learn to respect people. Even a difficult person have to learn to respect them. If that difficult person was your employer paying you a salary every week, you will never ever want to even try to disrespect them. And the only reason why you doubt you will not want to disrespect them because when you think about the fact that you got your mortgage to pay, car note, your children got to go to school. You need your light bill paid. And right now, this is the only way I am able to survive. And so when that employer mistreats you, you would think twice before you disrespect him or her because of what you think they bring to your life. Well, a person may not possess all of the things that will bring value to your life, but do not underestimate anyone because you never know who and what God will do through a person to bless you. I'm thinking about Elijah. And uh, when the brook dried up, God said, I want you to get up. I want you to go to Zarephath. I've instructed a widow woman to sustain you. And this was not a widow woman who 
when her husband passed away, left a decent 401k. No. A lot of land, cattle. No. She was without a husband. And she'd been surviving. And she was on the last note of the key of survival. The very last. And so God would tell Elijah, go out here. And I've told a widow woman to sustain you. They didn't say to feed you now. But to sustain you. Sustain means long term. And Elijah gets out there. And who did he meet? He meets a woman gathering sticks. The spirit must have told him, that's the woman over there. Hmm? Gathering sticks. This got to be interesting. How many know God is quite interesting? How many know that God is so interesting that he knows how to take nothing and make something? He knows how to take brokenness and do something with it. He knows exactly what to do with your life if you just trust God. I told somebody some time ago, you know what I've learned? God loves drama. Yes, I mean, imagine. Now, why would God wait until the well? put Jesus on the cross, let him die, bury him, put a big rock at the tomb and sealed it. Why would God allow them to do all of that just so that on the third day, God was sure, hey guys, listen, 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 listen. I'm Alpha, I'm Omega, I'm Elohim, I'm Jehovah Jireh, I am Jehovah Nisi. I believe God just did like that. And there was an earthquake. Watch that thing and God raised Jesus up. I want to say to you, be careful how you treat with people. You never know what God would do through them. And so Elijah tells this woman, listen, you're picking up sticks. Maybe you have some water somewhere. Go get me some water to drink. And as she's going, he says, wait a minute. I need you to do something first and foremost. What, sir? Bring me something to eat. I believe she said, now I know this guy is a scam. Do you not realize I have just a handful of flour and you almost have to tilt the jar to see the oil. And at this particular moment, I've made up my mind. I'm going to prepare for my son and I to eat and just in that house die and no one will even know about it. Elijah said, yes. I hear your pity, I hear your cry, but God sent me to change your condition. How many of you know that obedience to God is the gateway to the change of your condition? Elijah said, listen, God sent me here. And I guarantee you, if you do what God said, both of us will benefit. You go and do first what God said. Seek you first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And she goes, thank God, and she does what does say it, the word of God. She brings the meal mixed and brings the man a piece of bread and some water. And guess what? They never ran out of meal and oil until the rain returned. Now, what if Elijah 
has seen this woman and said, no, I do not think she is the type of person God would send me to and didn't respect her. But thank God, he respected her. And so when we're dealing with difficult people, we must respect them. And then we must be dignified toward them. Treat them with respect. Treat them with uh, honor. Treat them like they're somebody. Because guess what? Just a flip of a coin, it could be you. How would you want others to treat you? Because of something that is happening to you that you have no control over. How would you want others to deal with you when you are, in fact, the problem because of the difficulties in your own life? And that's why you have to reflect. Because sometimes we forget that while we can see other people's problems, we do have problems too. It's just that it's not the type that people can see. I was a cover up by the clothes we are wearing, cover up by the smile on our faces, cover up because of the nice lotion and perfume we have on, cover up because we've learned how to, you know, spell uh, GED, cover up because we took our car to have it clean, have a clean car, but the needle is on E but no one can tell it. You came to church, it's on E, and guess what? If God doesn't come through and let somebody bless you, you'll be in the church parking lot until next Sunday or when you get your little check. Because if you put on that road, you know you'll be thumbing a ride. And what God does, because you came because you are faithful. Before you even left the church parking lot, somebody showed up and said, God told me to bless you. And then you start weeping because you know your car, why it is clean. You took time to clean it, but it's on E. Cover up. So we gotta be careful. Think about your own self. Flip the coin. What if this was me? How would I would want others to deal with me, treat with me? So when you're dealing with difficult people, reflect before you talk. Respect their worth and be dignified toward them. And that's why being calm is important. Because difficult people can easily, I mean, just like a match, light your fire and cause you to just start pulling off your head. I can't take it any longer. You got to learn to speak to yourself. Be calm. Be calm. Be calm. When the spirit of anger wants to rise up, you got to talk to yourself. Be calm. Why? Because you don't know where that person is coming from. You don't know what that person is going through. You don't know the challenge that person is experiencing. Could be your child. Could be your spouse. Could be your workmate. Be careful. Ask the Holy Spirit to help you to reflect, to respect, and to be dignified toward the other. Before we get into the scripture lesson that I ask you to look at, do we have anyone for whom these sessions have not only been a blessing, but you've had occasion from the time we started until now to have gone the other way 
but because you heard and remembered the principle of how to deal with difficult people, it helped you through the moment. Uh, let's look at the scriptures very quickly because what I shared with you this morning or this afternoon or this evening, wherever you are, are actually from the scriptures. When we talk about reflecting, which has to do with thinking, uh, who read 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 7? Who read 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 7? All right, someone said, if help me, I just can't share right now, probably on the job. We thank God. All right, who would like to share with us 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 7? Did you have time to look at it over the weekend? Anyone? All right, let me go to it. 2 Timothy chapter 2. And verse 7, it says here, think about what I am saying. The Lord will help you understand all these things. When you are dealing with a difficult person or in a difficult situation, you must learn to think process before you respond. Don't operate on your feelings because if you operate on your feelings, your feelings are in direct proportion to the external circumstances that you are dealing with. You see, the human being, as I've come to an understanding, we are the most sophisticated automatic machinery in the world. We react to what is external. So in other words, if we are in a cold situation, our reaction is going to reflect just that. If we're in a warm situation, our reaction will reflect just that. Whatever the external, that's how we're going to react if we don't process, if we do not think. If somebody should yell at you, one of the first reactions is to yell back at them unless you think about it before you will want to even, what's wrong with them? No, I'm not gonna react like that. So reflection is very important. The next scripture that I asked you to look at was Romans chapter 12, Romans chapter 12, and verse 10, do we have anyone who looked at it? Romans chapter 12, verse 10. All right, let me read it. Romans chapter 12, verse 10 says, love each other with genuine affection and take delight in honoring each other. And if you notice, it didn't say the pleasant people the congenial people, the loving people. No, it simply said, love each other with genuine affection and take delight in honoring each other. That is, we must respect others as we deal with them. We have to recognize that they are people also, and we should not just mistreat them because of what issues that they are going through. Remember, you are responsible to God. Whatever happens, you must remember that you have to answer to God. And the last scripture that I gave you was found in the book of Luke chapter 6 and verse 31. Do we have anyone who read that for us or who will read that for us? Do to others as you would like them to do to you. Um, yes. The scripture here says in 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 31, it says, so what, whatever you eat or drink or whatever you do, do it all to the glory of God. Because at the end of the day, 
the one who will pay you back, the one who will bless you, is Almighty God. So whatever you do, my sisters and my brothers, do it as unto God. Do it because you know the truth. Do it out of the goodness of your heart. Because if you do it sometime expecting them to reciprocate, they won't do it. They won't do it. And if that's the motivation, you'll soon find yourself saying, okay, this is the last one. This is the last supper. It's going to be the last time I would do this thing. Because I did it last time. You are not respectful. You are not obedient. You are not, you know, grateful. And I'm through. But remember, we're doing it as unto God. As you said, you're doing it out of the pure goodness of your heart. And to that end, that's why we must treat others as we will have them treat with us. In Jesus' name, amen.